Hi, I'm Alvin, and I like making videos about the people who make the food we love to eat. One cuisine I've always wanted to learn more about was Indian food. I actually grew up eating quite a lot of it, but never fully understood the stories and the context behind why it was so good. Meet Chintan Pandya. He's the chef and partner at Tamaka, an Indian restaurant that's been getting a lot of attention for its unapologetic regional cuisine. They serve incredible, vibrant dishes from all across India, which I really wanted to learn more about and possibly eat. Lucky for me, Chintan was kind enough to let me spend the day with him and the team at Tamaka for a real behind the scenes look. This is a day in the life of a master chef. So I normally walk in by around 11 or something. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll go through the reservation list. We have a number that we stop at reservation. And if we are hitting that number, I call up the manager to stop the reservation. So we have 100 covers tonight that we start off with. It looks like there are a few VIPs we have. This is a regular day. And then I start working. So this rabbit dish actually is like uh, more of a hunting dish. And we actually only do one a night. So we don't have capability to cook more than one. So you need to pre-order at least 48 hours in advance. Here goes the rabbit inside this. I think there are humongous amount of misconceptions about Indian food. There are these six, seven dishes which people compartmentalize Indian food in. Chicken tikka masala or butter chicken, saag paneer, naan, samosa. These are the common things that people have seen across all the Indian restaurants. What we are trying to do is break that mold of Indian food. And that's why we are doing regional dishes which you might not have even heard of. Yeah, it's a 7.45 pickup. So yeah, it will be in from right now till like 7.30. So I'm just putting on the stock that we'll use. These are uh, lamb trotters. Lamb trotters? Very phenomenal in the taste and everything. So even for the other mutton dish, we use this as a stock. So it's very flavorful. So I'm putting a blend of spices over here. And this is now going to get boiled and reduced. Cardamom, cumin, cinnamon, cloves, bay leaf, red chili. It's going to be there till the time we want to start for the service. You want to have a cup of coffee? Me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. <laughs> what happens with Indian food a lot of time is that we are not focused on the ingredients. What we do is we actually invest a humongous amount of our effort and money into ingredients. That's a fried onion. We only use red onions. In our Indian food, we don't use white onions. I didn't even knew what was a white onion till the time I came to America. What happened when you saw it for the first time? I thought it was an expensive and a better quality one. So I tried to cook with it and I just couldn't achieve what I wanted to achieve. So then I realized this is a fake product. <laughs> is that milk? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks man. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, why is there so much milk? That's to make the paneer. That's a very secret recipe. It took us months. So we actually don't share it with anyone. We inform our customer that if, if they can get a better quality paneer than ours, get your receipt of what you're dying today, we'll give you cash. Has anybody found anything yet? No, no, no. I'm making the papri now for the papri shop. Normally we have a recipe for it and people measure it. Like I make sure everybody measures it. Hmm. When I do it, I, I just do it. <laughs> papri is this crisp that I'm making. Chaat is a generic word for a street food. So the concept was that you eat with your hands and you lick your fingers, but there are multiple stories to it, so. The pulao is this rice preparation that you might have eaten. We actually make it as you order it. So we make it with raw rice, it's not cooked rice. I've been cooking for 21 years, so. 21? Yeah. I'm 41 years old, so I started cooking when I was around 20. Oh, we are frying the papli now. Apparently, Chef Chintan is gonna make me a special snack. <laughs> now put your poppy in. Wow. It's beautiful. So just mix it up, mix it up. Mmm. Wow. That's for the mutton. 
So it's marinated overnight. That's with the uh, you know yogurt, red chili powder, garam masala, everything. So one whole thing goes in. One of all one? Yeah. Oh my. So this is one of our signature dish, <laughs> the champaran mutton. A sheep less than one year is lamb. A sheep more than three years is mutton. Biggest misconception about Indian food is that it is a buffet food. It is not. Indian food is not stagnant. Indian food is dynamic. There is humongous amount of depth and layer in the food. So one of the concept of slow cooking was very prevalent in India long time back. So what happens is once you seal the pot, the heat will never escape. It's just going inside. So it will come out at like 5.45 or something, the first batch. Goat neck. Go. We were looking at different versions of making a biryani with something very specific and unique things. And surprisingly, we realized that the goat neck was actually giving a humongous flavor and also has a lot of good fat in there. That's what prompted us to do the goat neck biryani. Try some. Oh, wait, me too? Oh, oh we travel across the country to do R&D. I think there's such unique perspectives out there. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this is not your conventional southern fried chicken is really unique. It's not a taste, you gotta understand. Mm. So I'm cutting the chicken for the stock meal. I'm gonna do like a chicken and a rice powder. Rice and spices and everything. It's ginger garlic paste, chili powder. You know, basically they're gonna have one meal a day, so we want it to be more nourishing and something that makes them fuller. They shouldn't feel hungry during the middle of the service and everything. What happens is the morning team came in. They did their chopping of onions, they did the all the paste, they did everything over there. Now our task starts where we start actually cooking that. Nando, we put in this in the, in the biryani, so we put the meat inside and the bread to make your cover. You're the bread master. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Kind of awesome. push the Instagram page. Uh, wait, so if I make bread, am I gonna look like that? Uh, <laughs> Eric, what are you working on? The cheesecake that we serve it, the dessert. Uh, we call it a uh, chana powder. It's like a burnt cheesecake. They call this amo cheese. It's like a Indian cheddar. Yeah, here, thank you. Oh wow, thank you. Ooh. And you have eggs, you have uh, vanilla, sugar, a little bit of salt, a little bit of uh, AP flour. Uh, you're gonna stay back, right? Yeah, I'll make you one. Oh, thank you. So those are onions, which we browned. It's been nearly an hour we have been doing it. And I add some red chili powder, a little bit of turmeric powder. So this is like a base, we call it onion tomato masala. It's just a base we use in multiple things over there. So I think the key to Indian cooking is the slower you cook it, the better milk product will come out. Okay, so I'm or just a few shelves, one, two, three, four, and the wines can just stay there. Mm -hmm. This is the family okay. meal for today. Thanks, Jeff. Alright, who knows? You guys better know this person. So guys, he's a very regular guest. He has been here at least six, seven times. I think last to last visit, he was the guy who ordered rabbit. Uh, he works with this company called as Does everybody know what is So that's seven top, uh, it's vanilla, it's in your section, okay? So right now we have one fifty. For the cans, we do have one rabbit. Um, biryani, we have 19. Okay, champagne, we have 28. Oh, so we have 150 now. So it's gonna be a crazy night. Just be careful with that. Okay, thank you guys. Have a phenomenal service. See you. This is literally the countdown before the shuttle takes off. There's a saying, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. The entire energy of your day is those hours where you are performing now. That is the time where everything that you have done over the last few hours comes into play. That is the time people will question you. That is the time you'll be judged. So we are like 10 minutes away from opening up the restaurant now. We are just lining up the biryani. This is what we'll sell in the first few at least an hour, hour and a half. This is the goat neck we made today. And we are just now lining it up over here. It's like saying that you watch a 90 minute movie. The 90 minute movie might take a year to make or two years to make. The dinner time is the final show. But the entire show to succeed is when we do the other things. If we don't do the other things, the show will fail. So it's like an orchestra now. 
Indian food is as colorful as the people of India. And something that we do is we are unapologetic about our food. So if it is spicy, it is spicy. It's supposed to be. They would order a stuffed pepper and then say it's spicy. But it stays stuffed pepper. It doesn't say a stuffed strawberry. And we are not apologetic about it. Indian food is vibrant. The literal meaning of the word dhamaka means a blast. This is a burst of flavors, burst of emotions that we want to give to people on the plate, on the table, in the food, in every form possible to, you know, get them excited about Indian food. So yeah, the paneer tikka is one of the highest selling dishes that we have and we grill it and we serve it with the chutney and the pickled onion. It's like a soft cheese, it just needs to melt in your mouth. So I think what happens is people order the appetizers and the main course. So that's when the appetizers will move first and then the main course will start on time. Guys, one paneer made from the fire. fire. You don't serve naan, but you serve paratha. Why? Yeah. Because uh, naan is like something that we eat when we go out to restaurants. Paratha is something that we use on day-to-day -day basis, actually. So he says, why not challenge ourselves and say that no naan? Because that's the common thing that everybody will ask in an Indian restaurant. But it's not a bread that we eat regularly at home. What does pressing it with the towel do? So what it does is, it makes this pressure and you get this texture. Indian food is as fun and adventurous to eat as it is to cook. In fact, we also ask people that if they want to eat with their hands, they should eat with their hands. That's what we encourage. There would be spoons and everything, but you'll end up eating with your hands. That is a feeling that you actually cannot put in words. You need to experience it. How are you feeling? Good, good, good. It's, it's a busy night, man. It's gonna be fun. So Eric basically handles the past. Papri chaat and pulao, he does it entirely. Uh, the dessert comes from there, we bake it over here for him. So, yeah, so we're making a uh, chicken pulao. Mixture of uh, green chili, ginger, cilantro. And then yeah, the soap rice. Uh, this is the rice that chicken soap for like the whole day. Yeah, so, uh, marinated chicken. Like all the juices of the chicken goes inside the rice, so it tastes better for sure. Like we usually sell like 30, 30 of these and I yeah. So every main course is actually served in the same dish that it's cooked in. So if you are looking for a sexy kind of a looking food, then maybe we are the wrong place. The entire concept of the restaurant came through idea when I ate something at home, which my wife cooked. She cooked a goat and a potato sabji, we call it tindora. As soon as I had the first bite, in my mind I'm like, I would never find this taste or freshness in an Indian restaurant. Why? You know, at home we don't, we don't eat plated food. We just, my wife will cook in those pots, we can keep the pots on the table and you just scoop it out of the pot and eat it. But that experience, that taste, that feeling of eating it, that's what I craved. So that's why we, what we cook and we serve it in that. Yeah, Mubha, I need five biryanis, huh? Yes, sir. That just gave me a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's for you, man. Oh, more? Yeah. Okay. My little corner is getting quite full. Something that we do is try to cook everything fresh over here. The menu is very small. It's very tight menu. We focus, like, instead of doing 100 things at 10%, we do 10 things at 100%. That's our philosophy. We layer up the entire rice and the biryani, there are around 16 to 17 layers. Then we cover it with a dough and then it's baked in the oven for like 20, 25 minutes. And we call that process as dumb cooking, which means cooking in its own steam. So we have been using it for a long time, like hundreds, hundreds of years back, but it became a very common culinary term, like cooking under pressure, like two, three decades back in the Western culture. So basically all the accompaniments of the table will go, then the rabbit will go, they will open up the rabbit on the table and portion it out for everyone.
all our food is designed to be shared. We culturally always had the concept of communal table in our houses. So we never had the concept of plated food, individual known. There's no concept like that. Our food is all communal. I just want them to enjoy it. I just want them to feel that what they have come here for, what they are paying for, they are getting a value for it. How are you feeling? Good, good, good. So we have now the last rush going in. So that should start in the next 15 minutes or so. Are you tired? No. What happens is when you plan so much, it works like a clockwork. Nobody feels that pressure. Yeah, so everything serves me well, to 90 to 95 grams. Whoa. That's for you. Oh, this for me? Yeah. Wow. Thank you guys. Holy moly. So we actually only have one dessert in our restaurant, but we love the simplicity of it. And it is actually baked fresh as you order. From the hot temperature as it on the table, it's going down in the temperature, the taste keeps on changing, I feel. This is when we get the final rush, the final round of guests and everything. This is the final storm. No, no, I'm just looking at the orders, what I need to do, what I need to do. Eric, M1 is on top, huh? Yeah. It's uh, 10.40. Sending out the last ticket. There aren't any food for this guy, this was here. What are you gonna make? Uh, no, I do some broth and rice. How was today's service? It's a little bit busy, but you know, you don't have no choice, so. Between me, Eric, Ronnie and Tina, if we have something to discuss, we'll discuss that. A lot of people say, oh, it's a very difficult job, but there are thousands of jobs in this world. It is what you chose to do. I chose to become a chef. And I want to give 100% to it. I don't see any hardship in that. Spending the entire day with Jintan was astounding, to say the least. Hearing the stories behind each dish, learning the deep and rich history of all these incredible cooking techniques, and tasting the delicious end results were something else. I realized that Indian food isn't a short list of six or seven dishes that I had grown up eating. It's a vast, beautiful library. Earlier, Chef Jintan said, Indian food is as vibrant and as colorful as the people of India. And I couldn't agree more. I'll see you guys in the next adventure.